Ciao, mi chiamo Martino Urbinati e faccio parte della redazione This Journal per l'area Europa Orientale. In questo video si parlerà di Lituania e nello specifico della narrazione storica dell'Olocausto. Facciamo un salto indietro fino allo scoppio della Seconda Guerra Mondiale, quando la Lituania si trovò contesa tra due fuochi, da un lato le truppe dell'Armata Rossa, dall'altro le truppe naziste. Al termine del conflitto la Lituania fu annessa all'Unione Sovietica, di fatto non lasciando spazio a celebrazioni fino al 1991. In ricordo dei caduti per mano dei comunisti, le autorità lituane si sono servite di personaggi storici ad alta carica patriottica per ricostruire l'identità nazionale, accentuando la contrapposizione tra vittime e aggressori. Purtroppo questo processo ha finito per escludere la comunità ebraica che chiede il riconoscimento di una memoria scomoda ai più e che vede come protagonista il generale lituano Jonas Noreika, conosciuto anche con il nome di generale Tempesta. Oggi ricordato come eroe della resistenza antisovietica durante i primi anni del secondo conflitto mondiale, Noreika collaborò con i nazisti prima al fianco del fronte attivista lituano e poi si macchiò di antisemitismo, arrivando a sterminare intere comunità ebraiche nel 1941. Questo buio capitolo di storia continua a venire taciuto dalle autorità, però c'è la possibilità che qualcosa si muova nel breve termine, proprio grazie alla nipote di Noreika. Silvia Foti è una giornalista e scrittrice, vive a Chicago e non avrebbe mai sospettato dell'eroe in patria fino a poco più di 20 anni fa, quando per la prima volta scoprì la verità su suo nonno. Dopo anni di ricerche, Silvia ha deciso di dire la verità attraverso il libro The Nazi's Granddaughter, How I Discover My Grandfather Was a War Criminal, pubblicato lo scorso 9 marzo. L'intervista con l'autrice si è svolta con l'intento di cogliere le gioie e i dolori del suo lavoro, affinché l'olocausto in Lituania venga ricordato e discusso per quello che è stato realmente. Vi auguro una buona visione. The way it started was uh, in the year 2000, you know, my mother was dying and uh, she had been working on this book about her, her father, Jonas Nareka, for 40 years. And I grew up always listening to stories about Jonas Nareka, what a wonderful hero he is, how he fought against the communists um, in 1997. Uh, I went with my mother to Lithuania and she received the cross of the Vitas from President Berezauskas. Uh, and I was very proud to be standing next to her when she received it. Um, and then she uh, turned 60 in the year 2000 and uh, she ended up in the hospital and then had um, gotten an infection and uh, re was literally dying. We were all in shock that this was happening so fast. And she asked me to write the book. And of course, you know, you, I couldn't say no. And so um, since then, it has just been, you know, I thought I was going to write a book about my grandfather, this wonderful hero. That's what I really thought. I did not know anything about his, uh, his time in the Holocaust. I had no idea. So, um, so when I discovered all that, Uh, which was a few months later, I first heard the rumor. I was, in, I was standing in the school named after him when the director told me uh, that my grandfather was accused of uh, killing Jews. And I almost fainted on the spot because that's the first time I ever heard that. And um, I came home and back to Chicago and I talked to a lot of relatives about this. And uh, They were saying that it's communist propaganda, that it's not true. And so um, I believed them. I believed it was communist propaganda for a long time because I loved my grandfather. Even though I never met him, I loved him. And I liked the story. I liked the story that it was communist propaganda. It was, it was a, good, a good, convenient story for me. So it literally took me almost 10 years 
um, until I finally got to the point where I wanted to research what happened uh, during the Nazi occupation. During that time, I, I don't know if you can see behind me, I've got three bookshelves of information that I got out from my mother, um, 3,000 pages of KGB transcripts, letters that he wrote from the Stikhoff concentration camp um, to my grandmother, uh, just lots of articles and books always written about him. Um, so, um, so one of the big, probably one of the biggest obstacles was my own psychological den denial over it. That was probably the biggest obstacle. And um, but when I finally changed my mind, I had come across this um, brochure that he had wrote called uh, In Lithuanian, Pakal Galva Lietuvė, or Raise Your Head Lithuanian. And uh, this is, this is uh, I did not know about it. And when I read about it, it just essentially was asking uh, all Lithuanians to boycott everything that the Jews sold in Lithuania. And it's just going on and on like this, Jews are the foreigners, Lithuanians for Lithuanian, uh, you know, do the patriotic nationalistic thing and only buy from Lithuanians, stop buying from Jews. So it's on and on like that for, for 32 pages. So when I finished this, I wanted to burn it because as his granddaughter, I wanted to protect his reputation. Um, but as a journalist, I knew I couldn't. And so, um, so that was that. And then the other big thing was um, I came across this book called Masines Judinius Deltovoya. And in this book, um, I found a document that my grandfather had signed while he was district chair of the Chole re region, which is the northwestern side of Lithuania. And um, he wrote an order in August 22nd, 1941, asking to round up all Jews and all half Jews in that whole region and to be sent at a ghetto that is gonna be created now in Zagare. And uh, even though I'm Lithuanian, I never heard of this town, Zagare, it's a small town. I looked it up on the map, it's right on the border of Latvia. <clears throat> and anyway, uh, it didn't take me long to find out that uh, by October, and, they, and the Lithuanians chose um, this holiday for Jews, Yom Kippur in October. And they chose that holiday on purpose and they, they massacred all of the 2000 Jews that were in that ghetto. So that's when I said, okay, that's it. Um, and then that's what really turned me around. I don't know if I answered your question or if I went off track or what, but um, you know, the Nazi's granddaughter took me 20 years to write. And 10 years was just the psychological denial I went through. And then, uh, and, and I, did, I did research his whole, what I called the heroic side of his life, you know, where he was fighting the communists. So I did do all that in those 10 years. But the second 10 years was digging into the Holocaust. Very hard. It was maybe the hardest thing I had to do uh, in my life. Because um, I, I grew up as a, you know, even though I, I was born in Chicago, I was uh, raised, you know, very Catholic, uh, very, very Catholic, but very Lithuanian. And um, I went to kindergarten not even speaking English because that's how the Lithuanian community was. They wanted to, you know, inculcate their children to uh, speak the language, which to them is part of the essence of being Lithuanian. And, um, and to feel already this patriotism before they even go to the American school. And so, um, so I felt that very strongly. I, I, I had many, you know, Lithuanian friends, Lithuanian dances, uh, Lithuanian singing, Lithuanian parties, Lithuanian camps, Lithuanian Saturday school. So uh, my whole identity was really wrapped up in it. And um, when I uh, had to come confront this, I really had to uh, 
I don't know. It was so hard. It was so hard for me. I, I almost went into a little crisis over it. I was uh, very depressed over it. It felt like a huge betrayal to me. Uh, it was it was traumatic. I will say it was traumatic. Um, and um, it took me a long time to see that uh, Lithuania had played such a large, like, because it, it was, you know, eventually I saw that it was not just my grandfather. Even though my book is just on my grandfather, you know, he was not the only one. And, um, and so I began to understand that the, it was a big lie that I was given about uh, Lithuania's supposed innocence in the Holocaust, that it was just all the Nazis. Uh, and the more I learned, the, the the deeper I got into it, you know. And and I I'm a I had been a journalist for 20 years. Now now I'm a high school teacher, and uh, my journalism training I think is you know the thing that uh, I was you know that had given me the strength and the training to say I have to be objective about this, and I have to you know he signed this document, and this is you know. This is a, a primary source document. This is not hearsay. And so, um, so when I saw that document and other things that he had signed, that was the worst one, but, but, but other things that he had signed as well, then I started putting the picture together. And, um, and, I, and then I got angry. Then I got angry at Lithuania for uh, lying. And I began to sense that it was uh, an intentional lie because they wanted to protect their reputation. They, uh, they, they, it's better to look like you're just the victim than to, than to also be a victimizer. And so I began to sense that that was going on. And, um, and you know, I, I am just this one person that nobody had ever heard of in Chicago. And, you know, and, and I thought, I'm just going to write the story. I'm just going to write the story. I'm going to try to write the best story I can. Whatever happens after that, I, I'm, I'm uh, practicing Catholic. Whatever happens after that is going to be in God's hands. And so I prayed a lot. I'm like, God, the, the, the rest is up to you. I'll write the story. I'll write the book. After that, if you want this out there, you're going to have to help me. So, so it was like I was praying too. I'm not, I, I'm a little afraid, you know, the worst part for me was going through my own denial. Once I, once I went through, once I finished that, I knew I am Lithuanian. I know they're going to go through it. I know, I know them. They will. And so um, I think my book is practically unassailable. I really do. I mean, it, uh, I was very careful with my research. And, um, and I also tried to, this is why I had to get a degree in creative nonfiction, because I didn't want to just assemble facts. I wanted to create a narrative that would really draw a reader into understanding what happened. And, um, and, and, and I noticed that there was always like the Jewish perspective and there was always the Lithuanian perspective. And I had never seen the combination of both. So that's what I tried to do. I tried to combine the Lithuanian and the Jewish narrative into one narrative. So it takes account all the Jewish sources along with the Lithuanian sources. And when you put them side to side, the Jewish, the Jewish information is much stronger. And it's, and it's clear what happened then after that. It was everything. Uh, also with some, some relatives, you know, there was a big bombshell that I, that I didn't even know I would find. One relative uh, who was 10 years old at the time 
had given me like kind of the last piece of the puzzle and it's sort of like almost the climax of the book uh you know the culmination of the story where i discovered that my grandfather took over a previous home owned by jews and moved his entire family in it and you know uh used their furniture and everything and he loved to play chess and he he had, there was like this beautiful chess table that was formerly owned by jews and the jews and living in that house so that 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 kind of big interview that I had with my aunt who um, has passed away since then, uh, you know, that, t that 10 year old, uh, when she was 10 years old, that memory that she had kind of was like the last straw, you know, uh, it, was, it, it was just sort of the last piece. I had assembled a lot of other information by then. And, and, like, you, and like you said, the Jewish sources were really, really important. One, one really important Jewish thing that I did um, was uh, here in Chicago, I have a really good friend who was a journalist uh, with, the, with the Chicago Sun-Times and, and he's Jewish. And I had been telling him about this project since the, I was, I had been telling about this project since the nineties. He knew me when I was in Lithuania getting, getting, you know, my, my mom was getting this. So he knew me like even before I discovered the whole Holocaust side of it. And, um, and so in the year 2013, which was the year I decided to go to Lithuania to conduct my research, he comes back, he's, he calls me up and he says, you know, I just came back from a trip to Lithuania. I'm like, oh, what did you do? And he said, I took a Holocaust tour. I said, what's a Holocaust tour? He says, well, it's where you hire a guide and he takes you to where all the mud pits where you think your relatives are buried. And I'm like, Howard, that sounds terrible. I can't, like, you paid money for this? This sounds horrible. And he says, yeah, but it's, you know, really important. Jews do this all the time. And, um, you know, it was a very meaningful trip. And, and we found a lot of really nice, you know, important information. So he, we hung up. And then um, a few days later, I called him back and I said, Howard, I have, I have this crazy idea. What do you think if... Uh, I talked to your Holocaust guide and asked him to take me to all the places that were that were that my grandfather was involved in killing Jews. And he's like, "Oh my God, that is a really crazy idea." And um, and then I contacted the Holocaust guide in Lithuania, who was the director of the Sugihara Museum uh, in Kaunas, and. He, at first, he didn't want to do it, he, you know, because I think he felt uncomfortable uh, with the granddaughter of a perpetrator. But after after a few weeks, he he contacted me again and he said, you know, I've been looking more into your grandfather. He's a very interesting man, and I'm getting kind of involved in his story, and I'm getting more and more fascinated, and I would like to do this with you. So. Uh, Simonas Dovidavichus, he also passed away. A lot of my sources are, are, have already passed away. <laughs> and um, so he, he was very instrumental in kind of giving me the, what I call the Jewish perspective. He was very good at educating me and taking me all through Lithuania and seeing things um, through his eyes. So that was a really big part of the story too. I think there's a lot of pushback. Um, there is, some, I don't know if you've heard of um, a man by the name of Grant Goshen, who is a Lithuanian Jew living in California. He launched, a, he launched a lawsuit against the Genocide Center of Lithuania, which is like the Historical Remembrance Institute of Lithuania for um, maintaining my grandfather as a hero. And uh, he launched many lawsuits in Lithuania, had gone through every single court in Lithuania possible, and they all ruled against it. And um, so now he's taking this to the European Court of Human Rights. So he just filed it there. Um, I met him three years ago, and he and I are, have now combined forces on this. So, um, so I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to that lawsuit. I don't know, you know, 
um, what in the meantime, very recently in Lithuania, um, the genocide center is having trouble uh, because other historians, you know, like in the Vilnius University, are now rebelling against the genocide center, and the genocide center is the the, the they are the ones who said my grandfather should get this. It was kind of based on their research and their and their on their research. So they they lifted up his um, anti-communist side and they completely missed or overlooked or ignored uh, what happened in the Holocaust. So um, there's been a lot of pushback by the nationalists, but uh, I think uh, there are more Lithuanians now willing to to look at what happened in the Holocaust uh, with some honesty. He, in World War II, what he did uh, in 40, 45, 46, was he led a rebellion against the second invasion of the communists in Lithuania. And uh, he tried to unify all the partisans together. He was unsuccessful, but he, tr he was trying. And so for that effort, um, they, made him in, they made him a hero for that. Um, he was, he was uh, executed by the KGB. He was caught by the KGB, spent uh, over a year in, their, in the KGB prison, tortured. They shot him twice. And then his body has been buried since 1947. He only became a, you know, and then after that, Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union. So there was no heroes of Lithuania at all. Everything was just frozen, deep freeze, Soviet Union. Uh, you know, there were only Russian heroes. There were no Lithuanian heroes. And, um, and, Part of the other problem was, well, this is this is uh, the the uh, Soviet Union would would not count Jewish deaths in the Holocaust. They would call them Soviet citizens. So that also masked the Holocaust as well. That contributed to masking the Holocaust in Lithuania. He so back back to your original question. My grandfather really was only resurrected as a hero after Lithuania's independence in 1990. And it was part of its trying to establish its own identity again as an independent state. And part of that was, you know, raising people who were heroic and, and saying, look, these are people who, who tried to, you know, get freedom for Lithuania. So he, he got uh, caught up in that, in that euphoria. Um, I think my goal at this point is to is to break that narrative that Lithuania had nothing to do with the Holocaust, and my goal is to help Lithuanians uh, come to terms with their dark history and their dark past, and um, to face it, to confront it. Uh, it will only help Lithuania itself to do that, just as Germany went through that, it helped Germany to do that, France did that, Italy had done that. So um, Lithuania has been subjugated for the 50 years under the communist rule, so they didn't even have a chance to do that. So I'm hoping that they will follow these other uh, democratic European nations to finally do that. Um, and I hope that my book helps contribute to that. That is my big hope. Anything's possible. It's possible, um, but they have to. They have to be willing to reconstruct, which is what I did in my book. So, and I only did it on Jonas Nareka. So they have to do it, you know, on, on the, you know, the rest of the country. Because I just focused on my grandfather. My deathbed promise was to write a book about my, about my grandfather. So I remained very hyper-focused on just this one man's life 
Um, but there, there are many other guilty people involved in Lithuania. And it is possible if you, you know, this is again where my journalism training came in. I took the Jewish perspective and the Lithuanian perspective on equal terms. Where I think in Lithuania, they only take the Lithuanian perspective on very high terms and they almost discount the Jewish perspective. And, and so I did not do, I think because that's also just being an American. So I kept them equal all the way throughout. And I put both of their stories together into one coherent narrative. And when you do that, you can only see the truth. I think it's not just looking at the historical facts. It's really, it's really, to me, it was like a big expansion of my heart uh, and willing to, to look at the dark side of the story. You know, I think it's very easy for everyone to look at the heroic side of their relatives. That part is almost fun. You know, and I think that that gets it to a lot of the uh, fascination for people looking into their genealogy and their ancestry. Uh, but it does; it is not so much fun when you uh, come across these dark, horrible things about your ancestors, and um, and it does. It sort of does affect your own identity. I mean, this is why we we all have this need to see what our ancestors did. Uh, because we want to learn more about ourselves. But then when you find out about these horrible things, I guess you find out about uh, the evil in, in all of society, the evil of humanity. You really see the dark side of the human soul. Um, for me, my faith has helped a lot. So that was my one of, probably my biggest strength, uh, was, was my strong faith. And so that kept me going the whole time. I prayed all throughout this. Um, and that's what helped me the most. Um, and also my journalism training. 